the start line, ladies and gentlemen, is number 14, Aaron Burmeister. My name is Aaron Burmeister. Today is the official start of my 11th I Did Ride. The dogs are very anxious and excited to get out on the trail. For the last 10 years, I've been employed by Quality Asphalt and Paving based in Anchorage. Our work season in Alaska, building roads and runways in the civil construction is from mid-May through late October, which is a very good construction schedule for me and working season because it gives me the opportunity to race dogs in the wintertime. My father, Richard Burmeister, was an Iditarod musher during the 70s and 80s. He certainly planted the seeds for this passion, but it was living and growing up in Nome where all my heroes finished the Iditarod every month of March that made my dream begin. One day, I will be a champion of the Ida Drug. One minute, Aaron, one minute. In civil construction, you are nothing without a good team. I am a project superintendent for QAP, and I have a very good team of worthy employees under my supervision. Regarding mushing, I did find my first teammate a long time ago in Nome. The teammate who shares this dream with me and without whom I could not compete. My beautiful wife Mandy, who also works for Kolaska. My handler Benedict is from Germany. But this year I had a lot of people to support me at the Willow Restart. All of my buddies from QAP were there, even Kolaska's president made the trip up. All of this support from the company was very heartwarming. Of course the dogs, my companions, who will be racing with me for the next 10 days and 1,000 miles to Nome. Alaska is a very challenging place to build roads and runways. Mother Nature is not often cooperative. This means delays in delivery of raw material and or equipment. Construction in rural Alaska is as unpredictable as can be. At the beginning of this year's Iditarod, the temperature was unusually hot for this time of year. When we arrived at the Finger Lake checkpoint, the temperature was barely above the freezing point. For the dogs, this is very uncomfortable temperatures. They are used to training in temperatures far below, negative 30 and negative 40 degrees. They were not very hungry, and most of them didn't eat that day due to the warm temperatures. Several dogs started to develop diarrhea. Hey Gordo, did you see that Aaron's running six right now? That's pretty good for this early in the race. The company is very supportive. I have a lot of followers. They're fans, they're my friends, they're my peers and teammates. When I arrived in Galena this year, I was down to 13 dogs. I had to drop three dogs due to injury or sickness and continue on to Nome without them. In the off season when I'm not racing dogs, I'm traveling in the bush in many of these same rural communities the elders are out paying respects to because that's the way their grandfathers and the old timers traveled. And I feel it helps me in my relationships with these elders and with the leaders of these communities. I think uh, Aaron and QAP have done an exceptional job 
in recruiting local people and I think that's his big the big asset that he brings to QAP. This is the local knowledge. Uh, everybody knows him and they're comfortable going to uh, Aaron and QAP. And rather than being happy with the top 10 finish, I was going to try to win the Iditarod, if not finish in the top five. So I modified my schedule again in Caltech, knowing that they were eating and drinking and they'd gotten healthy. And I went to Old Woman, took a six hour layover there, and decided I was going to blow right through Uniclete and go nonstop to Shack Tulik. Traditionally in the past, that's a bold move, and I've done it four different times in Iditarod. It usually takes nine hours on a decent trail. This year's race, had that move worked for me, it would have put me solidly in the top five with a race possibly with Lance Mackey and Jeff King. Sometimes when we're working in remote areas in the summertime, you've got to work hard to keep your attitude and spirit up because the weather, being away from home, away from family, the challenges start to get you down. And I did ride this year with the challenges we faced near the end. Lance was crossing the finish line and I still had 60 miles to go. It was one of those same feelings where we've got to keep motoring, keep going, and carry ourselves to the finish line. I didn't win this year's race. It's still a dream of mine to win the Edid Rudd, and it will be until the day I cross the finish line first and bring the victory home to Nome. I feel that every year we're improving, we're learning more, we're getting stronger, and we're taking the risks required to keep us competitive and keep us at the front. It's very difficult, but incredibly happy to see some of my friends and other mushers doing well. Lance Mackey's been a friend of mine since childhood, and uh, to see him winning the Iditarod right now is not only inspirational to me, but it drives me even harder because if I know Lance can do it, I'm going to strive harder and drive myself and crew and dogs and everything. So that's us standing on top of the world next year.